Welcome to this lesson about center of mass and moment of inertia. The aim of this lesson is to give you a basic background on those two topics, which are the fundamental pillars of dynamic of rigid bodies and mechanics of solid. In particular, uh, we, we divide this lesson in two parts, the part about the center of mass and the part about this, the moment of inertia. Let's start with the center of mass. And in particular, we define uh, the center of mass for a system of m particles. We define a reference frame system centered in O and eight points, uh, eight particles in their space. On each particle is acting a force, a field force, that could be, for example, the gravitational field. And we define the point G, which is the center of mass, as a point in which we can apply a force which is the resultant of all the forces on the single particles. Then we define the distance from the origin OG and the distance uh, from the origin uh, of a point, uh, of the height point, as OPI. Then, for a system of M particles, the center of mass uh, uh, is defined as OG is equal to 1 over m, the sum of i equal to 1 to n of mi opi, where mi is the mass of the height particle and pi is its position. In this case, the center of mass is computed with respect to the gravitational field. More in general, we can compute the center of mass for any field of forces with a vectorial product. OG cross product F equal to the sum of I equal to 1 uh, to N of OPI cross product FI. However, our main interest is in finding the center of mass with respect to the gravitational field and in a plane orthogonal uh, to the vertical direction. So we simplify the previous formulation and we obtain that OG is equal to 1 over MG, this, the sum of I equal to 1 to N M I G O P I, and we can simplify now uh, the gravitational acceleration, and we find that O G is equal to one over M, the sum of I from one to N M I O P I. Taking G uh, coincident with the center O, we get an important result that the first moment of the mass computed with respect to the pole G is equal to zero which means that our um, system of M particles is in equilibrium uh, with respect to the pole G. Let's extend the formulation of the center of mass for a continuous body. For a continuous body, we must introduce the concept of density, rho, which is a function of the space, so rho of x, y, and z, and we write synthetically that rho is a function of p, and P is a point of a body. We define the volumetric density as rho of P equal to the limit of delta V that goes to zero of delta M over delta V. We can define also other two types of densities, linear density and uh, superficial density. If we consider a 2D body or a 1D body, in the case that we can neglect one dimension or two dimensions. For a continuous body, uh, the mass can be calculated uh, with these formulas. The mass of a body is equal to the integral over the volume of rho of p times dv. In the case of uh, uh, surface density, we have that the mass of the body is equal to the integral over the surface of rho of p times ds. And in the case of a linear density, the mass of the body is equal to the integral over the line of rho of p times dl where B is the uh, domain of the body, and S is the surface, and L is its length. The center of mass can be calculated as uh, OG is equal to 1 over M, the integral over the volume of OP, rho of P, times dV, in the case of uh, volumetric density. While if we consider a, a superficial density, OG equal to 1 over M, the integral over the surface of OP, rho of P, times dS. 
and also in the uh, linear case, we have that OG equal 1 over M, the integral over the line of OP, rho of P times DL. Okay, so if we consider a body who is also homogeneous, then the density is constant, so rho of P is equal to rho. And it's trivial to compute the mass of uh, a body because the mass will be uh, rho times V or rho times S or rho times L, depending on uh, which density we are considering. So this will lead to a simpler expression uh, of the center of mass, which is OG equal 1 over V, the integral over the volume of OP dV, or OG equal 1 over S, the integral over the surface OP dS, or OG equal 1 over L, the integral over the line of OP dL. So we see a small example. We have this body, which is composed of uh, more pieces, and we want to find the center of mass of this body. In this case, we can divide this domain in uh, three subdomains, which are the bigger square, the small square, and the circle, which is actually empty. In this case, we can uh, now exploit the formulation we develop for the uh, system of M particles, because we can think of these three bodies as three particles with the mass centered in, uh, um, in the uh, center of mass of each subdomain. So we have the, um, the center of mass of the first square in the middle of the square. We have the um, center of mass of the small square. And we have the center of mass of the circle. In this case, we can now sum the first two and subtract the third and obtain the um, center of mass of the overall domain. Now let's uh, talk about the moment of inertia. And we start again with the system of n particles. We have again a reference frame centered in O. We have our uh, particles. In this case, we have eight particles. And we have a line in the space, uh, a line uh, R, with a unit vector E. So let B be a body composed of n masses mi in the position pi, and the line R, and the unit vector E. The moment of inertia with respect to the line R is equal to the sum of i that goes from 1 to n of mi opi cross product E squared, where opi cross product E squared is actually the square of the modulus of the uh, vector uh, between parentheses. And this is equal to the sum of i that goes from 1 to n of mi di squared, where di is the distance of a point p from a line r. The Williams theorem say that the moment of inertia can be calculated with respect to any axis with the following formula. So the moment of inertia with respect to line R is equal to the moment of inertia with respect to line R passing through G plus the mass times D square. So in this case, D square is the distance between R, the line R, and the line R passing through G. But let's see a figure to explain more in detail. In this case, we have um, a line R. And this is the same line R, actually is a line parallel to R, but is passing through G. And the distance D is the distance between those two lines. We can define the moment of inertia also with respect to two planes, pi and pi prime, with the following formula. So the moment of inertia pi pi prime is equal to minus the sum of phi from 1 to n of mi, opi dot prod n, opi dot prod n prime, where n and n prime are the orthogonal vectors to the planes pi and pi prime. This is also equal to minus the sum of i from 1 to n of mi delta i delta prime i, where delta i and delta prime i are the distances of p from pi and pi prime. For the Cartesian axis, we can write down that the moment of inertia with respect to the x-axis is equal to the sum 
of i from 1 to n of mi opi cross product e1 squared is equal to the sum of i from 1 to n of mi yi squared plus zi squared. And actually the same formulation, the similar formulation is uh, for the other two components of the, um, of the moment of inertia with respect to y and z. So the moment of inertia with respect to y is equal to the sum of i from 1 to n of mi opi cross product e2 squared and it is equal to the sum of i from 1 to n of mi xi squared plus zi squared for the moment of inertia of z is equal to the sum of i from 1 to n of mi opi cross product e3 squared which is equal to the sum of i from 1 to n of mi xi squared plus yi squared and also we can introduce the um, moment of inertia with respect to uh, the two planes, so the cross product. I, the moment of inertia x, y is equal to minus the sum of i from 1 to n of mi opi dot prod e1 opi dot prod e2, which is actually equal to minus the sum of i from 1 to n of mi xi yi. The moment of inertia with respect to y and z is equal to minus the sum of i from 1 to n of mi opi dot prod e2 opi dot prod e3, which is equal to minus the sum of i from 1 to n of mi yi zi. And the moment of inertia with respect to z and x, which is equal to, the, to minus the sum of i from 1 to n mi opi dot prod e3 opi dot prod e1 which is equal to minus the sum of i from 1 to n m mi zi xi usually in mechanics uh, uh, inertia are represented in a 3 by 3 matrix as it follows so in the diagonal we have the uh, moment of inertia with respect to the axis and outside the diagonal we have a moment of, the moment of inertia with respect to the two planes this matrix is also symmetric. Let's introduce the concept of moment of inertia for the continuous body. In this case, uh, for a continuous body, we define the moment of inertia as the integral over the volume of rho of p, op cross product e squared times dv. And the moment of inertia with respect to the two plane pi and pi prime is equal to minus the integral over the volume of rho of p, op dot prod n, op dot prod n prime where again e is the unit vector of the line r and n and n prime are the orthogonal vectors of the planes pi and pi prime let's take this property the moment of inertia with respect to an axis of symmetry is not null as in the previous case of the um, center of mass however you can state uh, other two important properties which are the following if a domain omega can be decomposed in n elementary subdomains omega 1, omega 2, omega n, then the quadratic moment is the sum of the single quadratic moments. So we have that the moment of inertia uh, with respect to line r of omega is equal to the integral uh, over omega of rho of p, op cross product e squared dv, which is equal to the integral over omega 1, um, union omega 2, union omega n, rho of p, op cross product e squared, dv, which is actually equal to the integral over omega 1 of rho of p, op cross product e squared, dv, plus all the other integrals uh, until the integral uh, of over omega n of rho of p, op cross product e squared times dv, and all those integrals are actually the moment of inertia with respect to r of the single domains. So the moment of inertia with respect to r of omega 1 plus the moment of inertia with respect to r of omega n. The same holds if we can uh, decompose a domain in a difference of two subdomains. 
In this case, we can express omega as omega 1 minus omega 2. The moment of inertia with respect to r of omega is equal to the integral over omega of rho of p, op cross product e squared dv, which is equal to the integral over omega 1 minus omega 2 of rho of p, op cross product e squared dv, which is equal to the integral of omega 1 rho of p of op cross product e squared dv minus the integral over omega 2 of rho of p op cross product e squared dv, which is actually equal to the moment of inertia with respect to line r of omega 1 minus the moment of inertia with respect to the line r of omega 2. Let's see an example. We have the same body as uh, in the previous part in the, for the center of mass, and we want to define uh, the moment of inertia with respect of line x. In this case, we can define the line x prime, which, uh, which are lines passing through the center of mass of the single body. So we can have also the distance from uh, uh, the line x as d1, d2, and d3. And we can exploit not only uh, the, previous, um, the previous properties, but also the Huygens theorem, because we have to define the moment of inertia of the big square with respect to x, which will be actually the moment of inertia with respect to the, his center of mass, plus the mass of the squared times the distance d1 squared. The same uh, can be said for the uh, little square and the same for the, um, for the circle. Now, after we have computed all these um, moments of inertia with respect to x, we can sum the first two and subtract the third to obtain actually the figure at the beginning. The lesson is finished and I will leave you the reference material for these two lessons.